So on today's video, we are going to show you how to upgrade a pre-built PC. So this one is from MSI. Uh, you can obviously go and build a PC from scratch, and that is probably the most cost-effective way to do it. However, these days, with the prices of pre-built PCs being a little less on the wallet, this is also a viable option. Now, there are a few constraints that we need to talk about, one being obviously the size of the case. So this is what you would probably call a mid-tower style case. So obviously everything's got to fit in here. The other challenge would be, is why we've got this, is the power supply that you would have received with this device. Now the likelihood is with this, you're going to get a maximum of a 500 watt power supply, hence why to compensate and fit in the 4070 Ti, I'm going to need to upgrade this. So what we're gonna do in this video is look at these two. Now I will say this MSI A750BN, PCIe 5 is an absolute bargain. Uh, it's probably one of the better budget type uh, PSUs. Um, links to everything in this video will be in the description. But anyway, let's get underway. So when it comes to removing any PC case, what we're generally looking for is the side with the pulley handle on or the Perspex clear glass side or glass side, depending on what one you've got and we just need to remove these two screws holding them in place. So after removing this, what we'll be able to do is just pull this and remove exposing access to the system and the motherboard for us. So what we're looking for is to replace this power supply at the bottom here and the graphics card that sits at the top. Now this one is a 3060 and we will be removing that as part of this upgrade. So each mounting situation for a graphics card may differ. Now generally on the cheaper cases or these type of cases, you will have a screw here which holds on almost like a metal retainer that's going to hold the carding. Now what you'll find on more expensive ones or just different type of cases really is you might just have access to different screws that sit behind there. But what I'm being able to do here is pull out and gain access to the screw that will actually be holding in the graphics card. Now I'm going to remove the power. That is the additional PCIe lane so that that can supply more than the original 75 watts that the PCI bus can supply. And then click the clip at the very back there, which is always a little bit awkward and can get a bit stiff and that should release the card. And as you can see, it's quite dusty. So this is going to need a good clean before it's resold. Now the sensible thing here would be to now replace the power supply before we actually do anything else. And just looking at the USB card that sits here, this may be a challenge and we may need to readdress this when it comes to fitting the new card. Because I think the new card is slightly larger. So most power supplies are usually mounted at the rear. Uh, you can get some uh, cases that are different. So it's just something to bear in mind. But what we're going to do now is remove those screws that are situated where the power supply is. And generally, there's usually about four that will hold it in place. But if you're like me in the past, you've probably only ever mounted it with two. Um, so it's just something to bear in mind that um, there might not always be four located and situated holding in your power supply also sometimes again on some other cases you may find some retaining clips in there that hold the power supply in place but once that's done what we should be able to do is slide forward the power supply enabling us to remove it from the actual case so i'll just demonstrate that here Now we are going to need to unplug all the various cables. So at the very top here, we've got the CPU one, which will need removing. There's normally a little clip on the top or the bottom. It can sometimes be a bit awkward to get at because you've got uh, overhead fans basically exhausting heat out the top, which is 
always a trouble and you can see here I am going to use a screwdriver just be very careful if you're going to do this that you just basically leave at the very top rather than poking it straight through the system board which is not the way to go So usually the final part is if you've got any uh, physical drives, whether they're SATA um, or actual raw spinny disks, it's basically to remove the um, power SATA cables from those and untangle any clutter that you made. Now, you will see when it comes to the final product of this, I'm not going to massively cable manage it and the reasons will become very clear later on why. So at this point, it's a good time once you've cleared out most of the components to either use something like air duster or a vacuum cleaner. If you've got one small enough, that can basically go in and remove any excess dust that we've got sitting in the system. So let's just get the power supply unboxed and ready to install. Next up, we'll just unbox the 4070 Ti as well and get ourselves in a good position ready to install this. Now the key thing is you may need this cable if you do not have a PCIe 5 or the 12 volt high power variant. So they're quite useful to have if you need them. So installing the new power supply is as simple as basically reversing the steps that we've done with the previous one. Now obviously what we need to do is insert this from the rear. Yes, ladies. Um, anyway, we're going to push this in from the rear and basically locate it and put the screws in ready to attach. And then we'll just repeat the process of connecting in all the cables that we need and if you're not sure, just refer to your user manual. So I actually decided at this point that the USB card wouldn't fit properly because of the actual footprint of this MSI device being a lot more than the 3060. And all that's gonna end up happening is it was gonna push it into the bottom and one of the fans wouldn't spin. So now it comes to locating, you just need to get it into the PCI slot. You should hear a click and basically align everything. 
And then finally what we would do is reattach the cables. Just always a good idea just to check there's nothing uh, impacting or getting in the way of any of the uh, fans that are running. And then basically we'll then reconnect the cables and we can put the device back together. So there we have it. This is the well completed build. Um, now, don't judge the cable management, to be honest. I would do a better job if this was my PC. However, it's my son's and he's done absolutely nothing towards this. So as he didn't come and help, I'm just going to leave it like that and put the side back on. Uh, but everything's plugged in. We've got the CPU uh, pin out at the top there, the standard ATX there as well, and then all the other bits that we would need plugged in ready to go um, obviously the sacrifice i've made is this card here uh, just because it won't fit but uh, that can be dealt with with a usb hub so that should be absolutely fine all right let's get the side back on and uh, go from there there we are pretty much good to go so let's get that all wired up